Alright, welcome to another episode of Canadian Corner. Uh, it is a solo stream today. Solo cast, I should say. This is Liddell, you know, the main caster for Canadian Corner, because I'm the only one that's consistently on. No dig at my other co casters there. Today I'll be casting a match between Wholesome Halfwits and Roomba Rotations. This is Season 10 NGS Division A East. Quickly starting off here, Roomba Rotation started off with a ban of Battlefield of Eternity and Towers of Doom. Meanwhile, Wholesome Halfwits has banned out Braxis Holdout and Tomb of the Spider Queen. I don't have the bans right in front of me on the overall season stats, but I would, I would predict that I've seen a lot of two-lane maps banned, and I think that's just because the unpredictability of the two-lane map and how it can really snowball more than a free lane map in my opinion. Just the XP, every XP is that much more important with one less lane. So if the solo lane that gets ganked or something like that, that's, you're likely to miss a wave which is 50% of the wave at the, of the waves at that point because there's only two lanes and so I think the spiraling out of control really scares teams and obviously Roomba the big, uh, uh, the big favorites with this match today uh, so it would be predictable that they would want to ban out the more snowball maps because theoretically the more you can control the map, the harder it is to fall behind, the more likely a team's skill is going to win out over another team's skill. Uh, without further ado, um, I'm going to start with the first game of the series. It is Infernal Shrines, which was picked by Room Rotations, although I'm going to quickly go into my soothsayer and switch some things up because I need to shame both of these teams right now for picking the wrong side uh, from what they were supposed to based on home and away. So I'm just going to quickly switch that up right now. Okay. There we go. They are on the correct side now as we go over to the gameplay screen. There will be no draft because this is a replay stream so once we're in the game here there we go alright on the side of wholesome halfwits we have key on the stukov we have crooked smile on the tychus we have skafa on the diva TKS Tankster on the Diablo and Darker Black on the Gazlo. On the side of Roomba Rotations, we have Iron on the Anduin. We have Idioms on the Joanna. We have uh, Joshua Scott on the, the Sonya. I don't know why that blanked for so long. We have Hiva on the Kalfas and we have the Lazy Hydra on the Greymane. My initial reactions to both teams, we have the double bruiser with the tank coming out from the side of Pulse and Halfwit, so a lot of beef on that team. They are not the beef boys, in fact, but they do have a lot of beef. Um, they have a lot of CC, a lot of sustain at the same time, but they do lack some of the damage you would see from a double assassin comp. Meanwhile, on the side of Roomba Rotations, I might even say that this is a classic caffeinated knights team, and that is very meat and potatoes. You have Anduin, who I'd say is the most well-rounded but also bland healer in the game. We also have uh, Joanna, which is exactly that for tanks. She's well-rounded. She doesn't excel in any one category other than her wave clear. Um, she's got relatively tankiness, good sustain, some CC, but not strong CC. Uh, meanwhile, we have the high damage uh, backline in the Greymane and the Kelfast, which both offer Nice burst damage, but they also have the ability to do sustain in fights if their health pools and mana pools allow it to. What, meanwhile, we have the the kind of, I wouldn't call it a glass cannon, but the very aggressive, high sustain, high damage bruiser in Sonya as well, who I really like on this map because her AoE sustain abilities allow her to stay on the objective for long periods of time. And... Uh, allow her to gain health while also clearing minions, which is a huge asset to win over objectives. You see, you see a little scuffle bottom as D.Va is the top laner, or the solo laner I should say. And we have Gazlo in the 4-man, which I've seen Wholesome Halfwits run before to uh, 
mixed levels of success. Looks like the Solanas are going for a bit of a double soak here. Uh, I think Sonya has the slight advantage in that area, although Diva ha is uh, a capable double soaker as far as Solanin goes. But it looks like they're going in for a gank on here. here. She gets a bit surrounded, pulled in from the jo uh, Joanna stun, and she's running for her life. It is all over for D.Va as she falls. And now Holzum Halford is going to have to react and send someone top to get that soak. That did allow them to get bottom camp, though. And so, value, question mark. They're going to lose some XP, but it will take... Um, Idioms quite a while to clear this bottom lane if that is who in fact they are sending to do that It looks like they are sending Hyva down to clear out the camp actually as we see As we see wholesome halfwits getting first to the objective, but the, the bruiser ca capped by Roomba rotations is going to be a huge advantage pushing top lane during the objective I do like the positioning here of wholesome halfwits they have the Kind of aggressive positioning with darker black on the gazelle being able to really set up turrets and kind of control uh, the map with that said though rumor rotations walking into the other team and and kind of taking a commanding position on the objective doing a good job of forcing uh forcing halfway off of the point diva great zoning tool but honestly the Oh, Idioms is actually falling quite low as he falls with his D uh, presumably not available as Joshua Scott also is going lo getting low at the same time. I do, I think the sustainability of the of Wholesome Halfwits was seen there is that they were taking a lot of damage, but between Stukov heals and the sustain of their two bruisers, they were able to stay in the fight for a longer period of time. Quick look at talents here as we as we're pushing up in this mid lane. Normally, first objective does not get that much. Uh, nothing really too surprising uh, from the talents so far. I think they're all fairly standard. Uh, we see top uh, mid wall, sorry, mid wall and tower falling, but that's about it. As the the impact of first objective is very minimal. Actually, looking top lane, we can see that the Bruiser camp that was capped just before objective got the same amount of value. So, really showing the ability of Macro on this map to really match the Punisher, and then sometimes outdo the Punisher. The important question too, as Crooked Smile is getting a CC chain, but he will be able to get out relatively safely, is... What... What team has the better level 20? Which is often a, a good thing to think about when drafting and when evaluating how a team is doing in the mid and early game. If if one team has a, a much better level 20 turn on point, which is the last talent available, then I would suggest that I would suggest that you can tie the early and mid game, or even slightly lose it, and still be in a good spot because of you know your level 20. Is I would give slight advantage to level 20 probably on... Actually, I don't know. I, that's, I'm, I'm having a hard time deciding right now because I feel like Sonya has a really good late game. Greymain has a relatively e linear, even curve when it comes to... Um, well, I should say line when it comes to scaling. Meanwhile, D.Va has an okay curve and then a pretty big sustain substantial sustain at level 20 based on the abilities so maybe uh, some of the viewers opinions can actually impact that because I would say it's more of a standstill or who has a better late game we see a huge damage coming out onto Kalfaz as Hyper has the back out here as there's a quite a scuffle over the uh, this bottom camp here Diva is joining the fight she does have bomb it'd be interesting to see if she joins and tries to get some of the uh, positioning on the point as we see a tank trade as Eva team's tanks fall but Diva's bomb forces Roomba rotations out of the fight completely and they are able to fully over this bottom camp. This is uh, one of the best starts I've seen uh, Wholesome Halfwits have. I 
Actually, from a lot of the games I've casted, I haven't seen them have a lot of early leads, and this is actually quite a strong early lead for them. I like the kill pressure that they have currently um, in sustained fights. And the, bully the, uh, and the ability to bully a point with Diva's Bomb. Objective is coming up this time uh, in the bottom lane. We do have the Bruiser capped first by Wholesome Hab, which, which traditionally means that Roomba Rotation's Bruiser will beat it out, depending on how the waves shake out. It's not a strict rule when it comes to how the lanes, which, which uh, Bruiser camp wins. We see the... Um, the Joanna light bomb combo as uh, Gazlo is stuck in the middle of it, but a huge silence from Key really shuts down everything Moomba Rotations was trying to do. And finishing off the Joanna as well, that is a 3 for 1. Very impressive combo there. Um, wholesome Habits, I've always felt like they've had good combos. Uh, and where they've really lost out has been early game XP and macro play. Uh, but right now they're even, even a little bit ahead in XP and uh, ahead in kills, and it looks like they're on their way to their second objective, so that's quite um, a convincing early lead for them. And I'd like to see them at least turn this into a little bit of structure, structure advantage, because obviously right now they're tired of structure. I apologize, I don't know why I'm yawning so much. I've got a yawning, yawning bug. We see a huge flip coming over to Joanna. Idioms will get out, but is kind of forced out of the fight. But Crooked Smile and TKS Tankster are both really low themselves. As they're able to get this bottom for it, but that may be it because they may want to not risk um, feeding kills and XP to room rotations, considering they now have 13 advantage. They are able to steal this siege uh, siege camp um, on the side of Ruben Rotation's map, uh, which will kind of deny the ability. Uh, as T TKS Stanks uh, does dive in, but they don't really want to engage here. They have 13 advantage, but it's a tight corridor, and that's that's a scary time when you are against the Kalfas. <laughs> Really both teams just posturing here. Actually, realizing level 10s have come online, I'll talk about that quickly. Uh, on the side of Room Rotations, we have Falling Sword, as we saw the Falling Sword Light Bomb combo, which is quite a neat trick. Uh, Joanna jumps into the air with Light Bomb on her, and then the Light Bomb goes off, and then she drops after, making it more like a two second stun instead of a one second stun. Curse Bullet is predictable with a Diablo into a Diablo. Light Bomb, as I talked about, uh, the zoning from Phoenix is really huge as well on this map, able to cover the entire range of the objective. Um, and B Berserker from Sonya, which really gives her extra sustain and damage when she's fighting on the point. So nothing too predictable there. We do see the light bomb combo coming out onto Pulse of Halfwits. Uh, Anduin is able to pull out the Hiver. Is quite a stalemate right now, although uh, Tyke is getting caught in a condemn and the Grey Mane says goodbye to that as TKS tanks that will fall as well as is a 2 for 0 right now. As Darker Black will be falling as well and... <coughs> uh, sorry, excuse me. Well, Key on the Dukov, trying to save his teammates, will fall as well. So that is a 4 for none and that will result in bottom 4. Just to go to show you how important... Um, or how... Uh, Narrow uh, there is a margin for error in Division A East because right when you think you've worked this hard to maintain a good early lead, you lose all of your XP advantage, now down half a level, and you lose your structure advantage by losing bottom fort uh, because of a lost team fight bottom that, if you're wholesome halfwits, didn't really need to happen. Um, I think. Uh, one sec, as I see that. The desktop audio is not picking up, so let me try and fix that real quick. Ready, I apologize if someone has said that in chat. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna set 
uh, send over this as a light bomb combo does come on onto Crooked Stun as he is comboed completely with not much chance for the wholesome habits to follow up there. That's a really unfortunate death going into the third objective phase. As hopefully this pause in action gives me enough time to figure out why the game audio is not coming through. Oh, it is coming through. Okay, it just happens. It just goes away when I'm tabbed out, which makes sense. Uh, regardless of the the pick that went down, the wholesome halfwit still looking for an engage, but taking a ton of damage onto Diablo. He, he's probably not going to be able to make it out. Oh, with a nice stun onto Joshua Scott, he is able to make it out. But really, with the numbers advantage, it's not much wholesome halfwits can do. I'd almost like them to split push a lane, steal this bottom camp over here maybe, and find ways to push back. Because honestly, the Punisher is still at this point in the game won't get too much value. As that is what they decide to do. Diva getting onto this forward camp. But a bit too late as Roomba Rotation sniffs it out and puts the gank onto D.Va. Uh, Will have liked that call a little bit earlier as they are now late getting back to the Punisher as it jumps on key, but he's slightly on the right side of the wall for that one. There will be less of a push because Kael'Fast was forced to answer bottom, which was pushed out. So we'll see if this converts into a fort. I think it will, but it will just be a fort and not much value onto the keep wall or keep towers. I didn't actually get to hold some half uh other uh, or level 10 talents. As we do see a fight breaking out while it is 4v5. Iron with another save onto the Lazy Hydra as the grab bomb comes out but the leap pulls him to safety which is a save and a cleanse at the same time. Quite a necessary tool when you're thinking about the wombo combo that Holzum Halfwitz is trying to set up. Uh, now down in structure advantages is Roomba Rotation's uh, map advantage, XP advantage, and kill advantage. So quite the lead quite swapping to the other side and arguably uh, quite a commanding lead at this point. Sorry, just making sure. Got something so that there. Alright, bottom lane, we we see Roomba rotations pushing out also. It's kind of a stalemate as there's no strict talent advantage. A huge light bomb oh sorry, a huge grab bomb combo with an APOC follow-up coming out into Roomba rotations, and that's not the type of thing you want to be doing right now if you're Roomba, where you have this strong macro lead. Uh, Hyba getting the pull, but that won't be enough as they are now on iron completely and it will be a 4 for none advantage. We'll see how Wholesome Happens uh, tries to capitalize on this and turn it into some kind of macro advantage. They are looking at bottom keep actually, which is a smart play, which gives them a win condition later in the game. Sonya trying to get some value top. Knowing all of Wholesome Halfwits are down there. Might get this top for it, which will be a structure for structure trade, which is unfortunate for Wholesome Halfwits, but a necessary evil right now because they know the team has the ability to get ganks. As they're actually going for win. I thought they were gonna go keep it out. But they're staying in for win, as there is a lot there are death timers still on the side of Holds uh, Roomba Rotations, but TKS tanks are falling low, falling to Roomba Rotations as they are grouped up and rooted, and this is going to be, uh, well it's only a 1 for 1 right now because uh, Diablo was able to come back alive, but they still don't have much damage on the on the core here as they're forced to back out. They are able to get Greyman as they are leaving as well, which is quite impressive, so not the worst dive in the world, although I feel like they could have broken off and gotten some good fort value, and now they're down their healer for a long period of time, so they're going to have to back or find a way to get some sustain here. We 
do see a little bit of a scuffle going out. I would give advantage to the sustain of Boom Rotations having their healer and Sonya with the sustain. As the Light Bomb combo comes out into Dark and Black and they are not able to respond at all. Lacking the CC and, and sustain to really pressure at all. And TKS thinks that with no souls it's going to fall to the Sonya as well as there's a 2 for 0 trade. Really not the play you would have liked to see from Wholesome Halfwits there, considering uh, their win condition that they just gained bottom. You would have liked a regroup, reset, maybe camps, get a Ford or something like that, and look to just survive the next objective. Meanwhile, you still see the team fighting it out as Skafar is demacked and has no uh, way of escaping and runs right into a Grey Mane which will be the end of their lives. As we could see game here as the uh, bottom f tower and wall for Wholesome Halfwits is gone already, meaning this Punisher will be coming down in a 5 for 3 hero advantage while also having the Punisher, uh, which is a commanding advantage that I, I think is a potential to end here. And knowing what Rubo Rotation's playstyle, that is a high probability, I would say. As you see, this tower is dropping like Swiss cheese uh, with not much of the ability of Pulse and Halfwitch to step up here. As we see the Light Bomb combo coming onto Diablo, knowing Diablo is still weak with no souls, meaning the lower health bars. As Anduin falls and all of that, sorry I missed it. I assume that was a Grab Bomb combo as that is on cooldown now. Uh, Hydra really low, but managing to get the last kill onto Tychus as they are going core. Joshua Scott, uh, AFK on core right now. They do get the Kalfas, but I don't think it will be enough as this will be GG game one for Room of Rotations. Oh man. Uh, well, certainly, uh, certainly that was wholesome halfwards advantage going into the halfway mark, but. They slowly bled kills, they slowly bled XP, and it slowly get, get, went over to the side of Roomba Rotations. And then once Roomba Rotations had that lead, there was a slight moment where Wholesome Halfwits wiped them and saw a potential to end, but it was a bit too aggressive for my liking. Roomba Rotations was able to counter wipe, get the objective, get some kills right before the objective turned over, and turn that into a win. Maybe you're seeing the desperation from Wholesome Halfwits looking for a win, looking for a series win at this late point of the season, and kind of letting the the moment of victory get to them without seeing the clear reality of their situation. That was game one. Let me quickly uh, load over into game two here. I believe, actually I don't quite remember which one game two was on. Um, Roomba Rotations, a safe bet now to make the playoffs, although they're in the hunt in A East is a very even and equal division. It is on, actually on Volskaya Foundry as I load this up. Don't actually know who picked it. I'm going to look quickly for that information. This was picked by Wholesome Halfwits, who had the choice between this and first pick, uh, map pick and first pick, because they were the losing team. It would appear that they've actually switched back and sides now, so I apologize for any confusion. Let me pause here. They are making a caster's life hell. Um, so, quick pause here as I have to swap in my soothsayer the sides and update it. Which is not too hard, but still annoying because if I didn't catch it, uh, it would be a confusing moment for the stream. All that I ask is that you, even if you pick the wrong side, stay consistent with the wrong side. Alright. Done my complaining. Complaining over. Uh, 
as we go over to the gameplay screen here, uh, on Volsky Foundry, game two between Wholesome Halfwits and Roomba Rotations. Uh, didn't actually update the score, so I'm going to quickly do that as well. My bad. There we go. Oh, I'm nothing. Alright, on the side of Roomba Rotations Game 2, we have the Lazy Hydra on the Li Ming. We have Hiva on the Rainer. We have Iron again on the Healer on the Anna. We have Idioms this time on the Diablo. And bottom, we have Joshua Scott on the uh, diva, That is your Roomba Rotations. On the side of Wholesome Halfwits, we have Key on the Anduin, Skafer on the Kalfoth, Darker Black on the Hanzo, TKS Tankster on the Anubarak, Darker Black on the Hanzo, and Crooked Smile on the Valera. Little memes coming out for the side of Wholesome Halfwits. Like to see the Valera spice up the game a little bit. Anubarak also, dare I say it, I don't want to trigger the chat, but a little bit of a Mimi tank. They buffed them. Still not. Uh, still low, way lower on the tank meta pool. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say maybe C or D tier. Unless it's a direct counter to a double mage or something like that. On the side of Rumor Rotations, we see picking up a few of the Wholesome Halfwits picks in the Diva and Diablo frontline. Let me see if it's Extermarena. It is Extermarena. As we see, uh, we see a uh, error in the Aliob's viewing system as Diva's talents are not showing up and her health bar is not showing up in the top right. So I'm wondering why that is. Probably to do with the f confusing part of her mech slash pilot modes. Anyways, we do see Exterminator, so they have very good siege damage now between, um, between Ming and Raynor. Ability to uh, clear camps very fast and do a lot of structure damages. Uh, damage. Not damages. Not a child. And we also see Anna backline, which is presumably why Valera was picked to counter the Anna, who is a very strong healer. Some of the strongest heals in the game. While playing far on the backline, but very susceptible to dive and without self heal. We do see Roomba Rotations bullying over this heal camp top here, as there's a big advantage for the objective that takes place mid first here on point A. I like the poke damage. It's a very high damage team with Kalfas and Anubarak. Oh, sorry, not Anubarak. Hanzo. As we do see some good damage coming out to D.Va, although that damage is deceiving because she does have a pilot mode behind it, so... Honestly, poking out and not finishing off kills on the bottom lane is gets very little value when you're facing someone like D.Va who doesn't care as much about the overall health pool of their character. We see the camp getting taken first by Roomba Rotations. Normally you want to be the second one to take it, but with that said, Wholesome Halfwits isn't even on their camp yet. So it might mean that they're late to objective, uh, which is not the end of the world on this map because it does take quite a while for objective to turn over once you've capped it. It's kind of a king of the hill point of a jet of a type of objective which will result in a punisher being taken by one team. They are staying top to clear this out. They ha they've conceded the king of the hill for now and now they're really just pushing out uh, this lane here uh, and defending it too actually as they've cleared it out completely, but Rainer will probably make sh short work of this top, but they will have a window of opportunity for Wholesome Halfwits to invade on the middle objective here. Wholesome Halfwits takes it back while Roomba Rotations is clearing top. I kind of like the early game, honestly, of Wholesome Halfwits more here, even if their tank is quite squishy. I think it takes a while for Extermarina to really get any value as a, de as a DPS and Diablo to turn on. As you see a dive here onto the Ana, she is healing, standing in the healing nodes, so she's getting some support from that. As Valera is, will fall before finishing off Iron, and Darker Black just getting away uh, in this team fight. Iron does have the tap, which allows her to get back to the point on time with half health, but. 
that might go up over time if uh, if she's able to get some other attacks on the heroes. Skafer not getting much value sitting in this bush here. Meanwhile, Hiver quickly rips the turret camp, and now there's a two to zero turret advantage, I believe. Just looking around, yeah, two to zero turret advantage for room rotations, which is a major factor this early into the game, as Wholesome Halfwoods doesn't even contest the uh, first objective, knowing that it's not worth dying for, not worth giving up more XP when you're already down half a level to the other team. It's not worth taking that fight right there. We see a split push as Hiver and Idioms push top while the objective kind of putsies around mid not committing much. It is trying to sneak up top now and finish off the top well presumably which is the strategy most teams take to prevent the other team from tapping during the top objective which is always the second objective. Often this comes at a lot of sacrifice to the health of the objective as it is taking tower and uh, keep sh uh, fort shots, but that's a that's you're not really ever gonna get a fort on first objective anyways. So you really want to just focus on getting the well, which will let you get second objective. A good amount of damage from Crooked Smile coming onto Hiver, but unable to finish that kill. You'd have to think they wish Wholesome Habits wish they were converting on some of these kills, uh, which would be giving them a, a necessary early uh, early game comeback. We do see level 10s picked up from Roomba rotations. Nothing surprised there. Presumably the nano boost is for the Li Ming. The APOC is just standard for the Diablo. We see the missiles coming out from Joshua Scott, which is not surprising because normally the normally Bunny Hop I would say is a counter to a uh, heavy frontline, which Roomba rotations does not. Uh, sorry, wholesome half wits does not have. And a caught out, a little over aggressive there, but they are unable to get the kill as Crooked Smile goes in deep for it, has to pop his ultimate, which I forget, I'm paying the name right now. As a huge combo comes out onto Darker Black. No, not Darker Black, I'm, I apologize. Uh, whoever the Cal Foss is, Darker Black is on the Hanzo. Quickly gonna bring up the level 10 talents. We do see Pyroblast, which is nice burst damage coming out from the Kalfos, but and I don't believe there's any major armor or spell shield talents that will block the Pyroblast, which is important uh, considering though that can really negate the value Pyroblast has at getting a quick pick on the summon with some burst damage. Uh, as as predicted, we have the wrap, the Anub wrap, which pretty much has to be used on D.Va or else D.Va is going to quickly rip away um, the cocoon. Meanwhile, while all that scuffle was happening, mid fort was taken out uh, by boom rotations, which means there's the first structure advantage of the game going out for boom rotations. Not the most, not the most important fort in the game, considering next objective is top, but it will be getting passive lane pressure throughout uh, throughout the match and while the king of the hill is being fought for. Dive and flip coming out from Idioms, but that is unable to uh, connect as Crooked Smile goes in for a dive, puts the cocoon on Iron, and then Wholesome Havoc is forced to try and get out. Key caught in all of that with a nice snipe coming from Joshua Scott and just getting in time before falling in pilot mode. There's a 2 for 0 trade, and this will be top fort, which is going to be a huge advantage for winning the second objective of the game. So, normally I would ask my co-caster co this, but what does Wholesome Halfwits need to do to get back into this game? Right now, it's not looking good structure-wise. You're down half, a level and a half, actually. Almost. This early into the game. Or in this mid-game, I should say. If you're Wholesome Halfwits, you need to get an Anubarak slash Valira combo onto Anna, Li Ming, Rainer, anyone is squishy enough, 
as we do see Leap having to be used to save Scapa there. We see the aggression coming out, but really they do not have the damage to burn Diablo, which is a major factor. They need they need the room to dive, so they need to coax Roomba in into taking a key for pushing up on them and really counter diving that when they have the room to dive. Because right now, when uh, Anna is positioned iron on the back line there, it's going to be really hard for her them to gank her because she's only a few steps away from towers, which would prevent uh, her from being ganked. We do see a Dragon Arrow missing there as Joshua Scott is low. Uh, and there's a lot of damage coming out onto Boom Rotations here, but Li Ming with the Calamity reset will rip apart Halton Halfwood's back line. And that is a 2 for 3 for nothing kill advantage there and objective, which is you would think could get a lot of value now being able to free push without with the Valera being able to do very little to the protector's health and Anduin being a healer having low damage overall. They're gonna look for a keep here, which I think is the right call, considering they want to have a win, a, a win condition. And having this keep down it means if they wipe Roomba, uh, Wholesome Halfwits one more time, it's a potential to end. You see a lot of aggressive teams do this, teams that really want to get kills and solidify team wipes. You see kind of a posturing here. Uh, all five members of EVA team are here. This is the perfect opportunity for Wholesome Halfwits to dive the Anna if they can find a way, but Leap coming out onto Crooked Smile, he's half health before, or she's half health before uh, they are able to engage, and that means the Protector is able to just uh, take the key for free without much threat coming out onto Roomba rotation. Uh, Wholesome Happens has to be careful here, their health bars are low and this protector is coming to an end allowing them possibly leaving to hit Reset City. Wholesome Happens backing up into their own keep uh, and able to back up completely. I don't know why they're not letting this team fight end just because of the potential of Reset City wiping and uh, forcing uh, or allowing room rotations to wipe, but I'm proven wrong almost instantly because they were able to take Diva out of her mech and then pyroblast her, which I would assume does almost her entire health bar, and she was already at half health while running away. So, so proving me wrong there, getting the pick from that extended uh, extended long fight top lane there, and giving them the map advantage enough to take this heal camp. Just reading the chat there. Well, if it is idioms to blame, I apologize for blaming either of the two teams. I will blame idioms solely in the future. We do see level 16s for both teams here. Uh, this is probably Wholesome Halfwood's uh, best chance of getting back into the match. Uh, but, Roomba Rotations takes a little poke here at bottom fort, uh, leaving themselves open to rotations by uh, by the Valera as they do cocoon the Ming and almost get enough damage onto, Valera, onto Anna, but not quite enough as Dr. Black is caught out, uh, Key is caught out, and that overextension results in their backline getting picked. So really what I don't like about the way Wholesome Halfwits constructed this team is that they recognize the need to dive the Ana. Diving it, uh, disrupting the Ana is a necessary part of countering Room Rotation's team. But with the Lyra in alone without a noob offering much damage to CC, maybe other than the initial stun maybe, the Lyra is, does not have enough power to solo kill the Ana. Which means that the Lyra often dies or uses all of her abilities and loses a lot of her health and forced out of the fight without getting the Anna kill. 
which means you're not getting really any value from the Valyria in the team fight. Anna is able to stay in the team fight and stay on the back line, still healing even if she's low. And meanwhile, the strong dive damage from Diablo, D.Va, Reyna is a relatively self-sufficient uh, assassin, and the uh, okay. Calamity Ming build, which allows her to dive in quite, aggress quite, quite aggressively, means that really the, the back line of Wholesome Halfwits is left out to dry as the new back doesn't have much peels. Valyra is the other front line is way deep and so is a bunch of squishies left to their own devices and Rubo Rotations is able to feast on them. So ideally you want to see a bit more commit to a dive comp onto the Ana, especially when there's also a Ming there to dive. And not much peels from D.Va or Diablo. Those are not peel frontline at all. So they really wouldn't be able to keep um, the aggression of Wholesome Halfwits off of them. With that said, I don't see the draft order, so I don't really know how those picks went down. But overall, I think Rumba Rotation's draft is a lot better equipped to deal with the weaknesses of their own team and exploit the weaknesses of Wholesome Halfwits team. Bottom objective here is level 20 advantage, Crooked Smile getting taken out of stealth. Uh, unable to get out here, which does require the pull and the ult on himself. The key caught during that pull will get completely bursted down as that was an uneven fight to begin with, not to mention the level 20 advantage from Ruby Rotations, as Kael'thas was top, having to clear out a big wave top. We see D.Va sitting on the point here, as the four man for Roomba Rotations pushes down the keep. This will open up a win condition for the Punisher. Not Punisher, Punisher was last game, Protector was this game. As we do see a nice stun coming onto Ming, but really not enough damage follow up as Darker Black gets low. TKS tank stuff falls really low. He's gonna have to back now. As Crooked Smile was trying to cheeky little gank thing, but really, like I said, when he's all in alone there, he does not have enough damage to solo kill Anna. This protector is coming up now with 20 advantage. We'll see who gets in. It is idioms and iron. It is idioms and iron. Nope, the lazy hydro is getting in. Which means they have less frontline and less damage, but they still have a mix of frontline and damage with Hiva out, Joshua Scott out, and the heals coming out from iron. But once again, this is the best time uh, that Wholesome Habits has in trying to gank the Ana as they are able to get the Pyroblast onto her with the stun combo. Hyva now caught out relatively alone. He's gonna get taken down as... It is a two for two though because of the damage coming out from Joshua Scott and the Protector. And Key is caught out and will fall as well. So there's a two for three. So despite a very good gank attempt onto Roomba Rotations, they are able to get as many return kills. And this might be GG with uh, we have, uh, with a numbers advantage and an even greater numbers advantage as Diva is able to take out the Lyra. Uh, as this will be the end of game two with Moomba Rotations taking a convincing two game set. Going over to the stat scene here. So a 2 0 victory for Moomba Rotations. Uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a tough season for Wholesome Halfwits. I see good parts of their game. I I think I've seen them uh, uh, execute ganks and combos quite well at times. Um, I almost feel like maybe they were a bit misplaced in this division. They have A level players, but I don't know if I've seen them play A level as a team yet. And I do think they would actually be a top B team with a lot of the skill and, and combos that they've been pulling off. Um, so that's not anything against them. I think that happens in every division. There has to be someone at the bottom. There has to be someone at the top kind of thing. I've liked how they've evolved, how they've tried to change up and really do some riskier, memeier things with their team comps. You know, because why not? When you're punching up, I think it's the, the, the underdog's... Uh, responsibility to if they think they can't win a normal game why not change the rules of the game and change how both teams have to play based on a Mimi draft um, and I've seen them do that a couple times 
I like what they identified with the Valeo, but she was on an island in that game. Meanwhile, Roomba Rotations is their classic Roomba Rotations. They're able to execute team fights very well. When they get kills, they take a very direct route in opening up a pathway to victory uh, and a win condition. And then once they have that win condition, they look for team wipes that will be able to give them that win condition. So it's 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 quite a direct and aggressive uh, team strategy that exploits uh, teams lower in the standings quite often. Uh, this has been a two-game set. Actually, I can go quickly over to the um, standings here. As we see Caffeinated Knights clearly at the top, we see Roomba Rotations at 11 points. So we see like the top three teams are quite separated, but actually only four points separate Roomba Rotations in third and Tiny Dancers, my team, in 10th. So really with three games left, there could be a lot of movement through the end of the season. I think Roomba Rotations is a safe bet to make playoffs. But with that said, I think there's a lot of movement um, that's going to happen in the last three weeks. And Wholesome Halfwits has the ability to play upset for a lot of teams that are trying to make playoffs. This has been... Sorry, that was a really bad transition. I'll get better at those. Anyways, so this has been a Canadian Corner episode by a solo cast from Liddell here. Uh... An A East matchup between Rainbow Rotations and Wholesome Halfwits. Rainbow Rotations taking a 2-0 victory in quite convincing fashion. Looking to close out the season strong. Meanwhile, Wholesome Halfwits hopefully will be able to finish out the season with a few more wins. Be able to get a few, bit more experience going into their next season. Uh, thank you for joining me. I hope that this was a, a slightly above average viewing experience for Heroes of the Storm. Uh, that's that's the quality I aim for and hope to achieve. I uh, hope to cast another game, maybe even a couple playoff games. Thanks for joining me. This has been Canadian Corner.